Well, good morning and welcome to this week's presentation of Tips and Tactics, which is also our podcast, the C the uh, you know, which is the Chimney and Fireplace Success Network. So Cheryl and I are going live today and we got a really great subject matter. We posted earlier this week on the CBC Facebook page, and the question we asked was, What did you want to become when you grew up? So as we were talking about our subject matter for this week, Cheryl said, you know, I think I want to do a show on that right there. And she asked me, said, Jerry, what did you want to become when you grew up? And then she shared with me. So I'm going to let her start off today's episode, Cheryl. What's what's this question all about? Why, what's the, why do you want to get answers to this question? Uh, the question that I'm looking at the answers for is the fact that I would say 99.999% of us are not doing what we thought we would want to do when we were a child. Uh, a lot of girls had uh, visions of being nurses, a vision of being teachers, and those have made those. Um, I myself, and this one kind of threw you this morning, I wanted to run a spaceship my whole life. I wanted to be like Captain Kirk. Not only did I want to be on it, I wanted to be a Captain Kirk. So you wanted to actually be Captain Kirk. I wanted to be the leader. But, but wait a minute. This was in a time that women weren't accepted to do jobs like that. Well, if you know me and you know me better than anybody else, you know I've never done anything really. This is the chickiest job I've ever had. I've never done anything that women were supposed to do. And But the trouble is, uh, we definitely weren't into space travel at that time. I actually remember the first launching of the spaceships, or of the, yeah, the launchings. And so it wasn't a time that I could be, but I wanted to be because of Star Trek. I wanted to be a female Captain Kirk with the logic of Spock and the, and the, demeanor of the doctor okay. and everybody laughed at me, but it is what it is. So this came from you watching a movie. It's what enticed you that you wanted to become the first female captain of a starship. Yeah. That was the thing that triggered that. I always wanted to be the one in front. I, I'm not a good follower. I wish I were. I'm not. I always have been the leader. And so it was the perfect fit for me if it had been a real thing. Yeah, but also let's look at this. You know, that's amazing to me when you told me that, because when you look at it, your father was a well-known contractor and built houses. So why was that not your childhood desire? But I guess because not he built houses, I wanted to build structures in the universe. I wanted to be the one that planted the flag. I wanted the one be the one that built the presence. So in a way it was the building. Okay. So it was. So, but at the same time, you know, we're so influenced as children and we all probably go through that stage of imagination. Like Stephen Scaly posted, I, he guessed he would want to be a fireman. In fact, one of our grandsons, remember when that was what just tore him all to pieces was them red trucks and driving that and even got him toy fire trucks and wanted to ride in back in his earlier days. So, but was that what did it? Was a movie? Was that a big influence on you? I think it was. It was one of the first things I remember as a child. We didn't have a TV when I first was born. There wasn't one there. I remember the first one. That's scary. But it was like I say, it was the thing of something that I was always told when I made told somebody that's what I wanted to do. I don't know if it was so much that I wanted to do it or that I was told it would never happen. Really? So people told you it couldn't happen back in those days? They laughed at me. They told me it can't happen. Women can't do that. And you know me again, more than anyone else. The thing I have the hardest problem with is somebody telling me I can't do something. I can't understand why I can't do something. So how long did you go before you gave up on the idea of being this captain of a starship? Gave up. I'm still looking to be what I want to be when I grow up. 
Okay, so you're still looking to be what you want to be when you grow up. So even at our ages, you feel like you still haven't become what you wanted to become whenever you grew up. I still want to run a spaceship, okay? Again, I will probably go to my grave, honestly, with that in my bucket. Really? So that would be on your bucket list still. If you could command a starship, that would really be a great thing for you. That probably is my bucket list. That would be on it. Well, you know, I remember back when I was a kid and we went through this and they kind of like, what was the first thing that got you serious? And during my childhood, I can remember a couple things. One was watching James Bond as 007 and all that we went through. And back in those days, you could give your kids toy guns back in those days. In fact, you could give them real guns back in those days because that was the way we were raised. But at that time, I can still remember getting a shot up you know, a toy shoulder harness of, um, you know, for a gun to be in a, a holster, all these different things to be that secret agent. In fact, you and I went to a restaurant one time up in Milwaukee and had dinner there. We were at the NCSG convention and we went to a place, I forget the name of it, but it was all set up like James Bond and 007 and secret agent stuff. Do you remember the name of that restaurant by chance? I don't, but I'll, it'll come sooner or later. But yeah, that was the bomb. Yeah, but you know, the bad thing was we went back to Milwaukee and you took a bunch of people that were supposed to be in my seminar that day and you took them all to this restaurant and they were all late getting back from my seminar. And we know why. Because you told me I couldn't do it. Right. But, you know, as we go through life, this is what happens. And I want you to think for a minute. Are you doing right now what you plan to do when you were at a younger age? Maybe you're follow following in your parents' footsteps. But is that realistically how life is planned out for you? What do you think? Some people are. A lot are. Actually, I have fallen. I, for years, I fell back into the construction line. I hung wallpaper for 22 years. So I did fall back into that realm. And actually that's kind of what we do now. We build people, but I don't, you know, people just need to look back at their past and see what were their dreams when they were young. Yeah. So let's do this. Let's, let's do a little history. You know, in your, in your lifetime, you've had different career choices that you followed. So what are the, what are the careers that you followed since childhood where you earned an income and then went to something else. What's some of the jobs that you've had? I was actually a secretary for three weeks. That didn't work out. So um, I moved on to motherhood and then I started hanging wallpaper again because I was told I couldn't do it, but mainly because I had to feed my children. And then construction took a wild turn and all of a sudden I was trying to decide, okay, what can I do to bring an income in a time when construction was down. So I decided to drive a tractor trailer truck. Really? So you drove a truck. I bet a lot of people are impressed with that one. So you let's tell them where you drove your tractor trailer truck to. I drove across country. I like 230,000 miles. And I did that because I was told if I ever wanted to come back, I'd need 200,000 miles. So I logged 230,000 miles, came back, kissed my guy on the head that was in charge, told him, thank you. I appreciate it. Went back to hanging wallpaper, went from wallpaper to um, building islands, actually, I guess was the next step. I also owned a limousine service, which I wouldn't recommend to anyone. And so here I am today, still building islands and working with you. Gotcha. So you went through a lot of career choices. Were some of these forced or were some of these voluntarily? I volunteered to do ever all, all of them. My main thing is the only one I was forced to do uh, in a way was to hang wallpaper because uh, I didn't have the children's father had left and I, I had to feed the kids. So I think I took the first job I was told I couldn't do. Okay. So, and also, you know, what you've done in this and today, when we look at it, you're actually have more than one career path that you're following today, even though let's face it, we are of the age that we, it's time that most people retire. So now you, you know, what's, you've got these different careers that you're actually doing and playing with now. Yeah. I own a manufacturing plant. I build outdoor kitchens, uh, fire pits, fireplaces, um, 
we manufacture them, send them all over the country. I am a Ziegler certified coach and trainer, and I work under your umbrella under that. We work with businesses. We work with people. I just wear a lot. Of, I'm an author. I, I wear a lot of hats. Right. Not only that, you've also gone through, after you turned 60, you went through a lot of training. You went through your training to be a trainer, to be a coach. And then you went to your disc assessors training. And not only did you get the minimum standard, you went to the highest level of being able to do disc assessments for people, right? I did. I enjoy that. I think that I did that one because I totally enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, I've always been a people watcher and now it, it was getting to be really nice why I saw in people what I saw. Right. And, you know, in my life, what I did, you know, various ways to earn money. When I was a child, it's really interesting. My first job was actually, and I've got this in my book, Chaos to Reinvention, was actually shining shoes in a barber shop. I had this entrepreneurial spirit and I would see where people could shine shoes. So I made a deal with the local barber and set up a chair in his barber shop. So my first job was actually shining shoes. And I also worked in a seafood restaurant, cooking seafood. I've still not reached 16 years old, but in my next career. And then my next one from there, still in high school, and I actually didn't have my driver's license yet, was the next 10 job entrepreneurship where I rented a wash pit at a local gasoline station and set up a business after school and Saturdays washing cars for people and kept going through that. Then as I came out of it, when I got into high school, I got involved in an, a teaching course or excuse me, a course in high school, which was called ICT, which is Industrial Cooperative Training. And in that, they assigned me to a local printing shop. You hear that, Stephen? I see you committed to that. But I was trained in that, and I worked in the bindery. I worked as a uh, paper cutter. I then worked in the gold stamping division. I learned to run letter presses. I learned to run offset presses. From that point, I was reading a magazine one night that a friend, that a uh, guy working next to me had, Mother Earth News. And it had the famous Mother Earth News story in there. And the Mother Earth News stories that told me all about becoming a chimney sweep and getting, you know, and what and getting the astronomical figure that you could get of $45 a chimney and opened up my chimney sweep business. And again, I've detailed this in one of my books, went to the bank, got a got a loan for like I think it was $1,500. And then ordered that August West system. The tooling kit came up and then I moved into that type of thing. You know, and here you go. Ronald Clark says, I wash. I was, a, he says I washed, but he was also a pressman. So Ron, what kind of printing presses did you run, sir? Because I ran Heidelberg. I ran Mealy. I ran a Planica and I also ran some Harris equipment. Okay. So pretty good. But Ron still got his spelling messed up there. It says, I was LOL. So Ron, what kind of pressman were you? Because Heidelberg was my main form, main press that I ran more years than anything else out there. So, but that was the things until life disrupted me back in 2010 and everything changed. And it's like, what are you going to do now, Jerry? What are you going to become? You failed tremendously in what you were doing. And then a friend of mine told me, he said, Jerry, you need to become a coach. These guys need you. And that kind of, you showed you, remember that day? All too well. I remember it all too well. But it took us to a different path entirely, one that I, that has come full circle. Back with the chimney sweeps. We're back with uh, helping people the way we were. You've always been in that realm once you got out of the, the small businesses. But you did neglect to tell us one thing. What was that? What did you want to be when you were a little boy? A little boy. <laughs> That's the good one. Because right now, the thing, and this is going to really shock some people, but back in those days, this truck would come down the street every two or three times a week, and these guys would jump off the back of the truck, and they would go into the backyard and then they would come out with the garbage cans, spinning the garbage cans going. And it just amazed me that these guys could ride on the back of the truck. So I guess one of the work, one of my first dreams was become a garbage man. How about that? You know, that's, that's probably an interesting <laughs> one. You like that part. You wanted to share that part, didn't you? I was not getting off this thing without that coming out. 
Yeah. And like Donovan's just added, he loves hearing the Mother Earth stories from so many icons and legends of the industry. It connects many of us to that era in time. That's right. It does. When you look at it, Donovan, back in those days, Mother Earth News triggered so many people to go into the chimney sweep industry. And from there, and Ron says he ran a five, four to five color Harris and did. he also ran a AB Dick. How about that? And if I look back here, Stephen Scaly, he done a Heidelberg, a Ryobi, and did some dark room work. Now, the whole thing is, I know what all those brands are and things about it. When you look at a Heidelberg, and I said a Mealy Press that I ran, most of the great printing equipment at that time came from Germany. And this was one of the reasons that we learned to use, we learned to work with the metric system because we had metric tools. So, you know, I learned more what a 10 millimeter wrench was, what a 17 millimeter wrench because everything was set up. So I was able to get engaged in the metric system for toolies for, and tools for, in a much earlier age. And Ronald Clark said, and Albert. So I'm presuming you're talking about an Albert that was also in the printing business. It's amazing what goes on. But it is, there were so many of us that got influenced. But the thing is, life changes. It's like Ron Clark that's on here. Ron Clark has been working for a chimney uh, products distributor for quite a few years, you know, and then he, and then he's now working for the chimney shop up on South Shore. So Ron, you're a person that's went through a career change recently. When I look at Donovan, Donovan is also a, you know, Donovan is also a person that has made a career change that probably a couple of years ago, he probably would not make an idea. Okay, here we go. Bill Buckley says, my daughter's falling in my footsteps as an entrepreneur. She started a garbage collection company, has grown to three trucks. I'm sure she would be happy to put you <laughs> to work. Well, Bill, if I decide that I want to fulfill and my childhood dream, tell her I'm going to be in contact with her. But at this stage, I just don't see me spinning garbage cans out of the backyard. Not only that, they don't even do it anymore because now it's all curbside pick up there. you got to haul your trash cans out. And like here, we have to have our trash cans out every Monday morning because now the world changed and there's no garbage men going down the road. All they do today is drive the truck and they have this hydraulic arm that goes out and grabs it. So, but these are the things that go on. More than likely, most of you that are on here have followed different career paths as you've gone through life. Here's the thing you want to remember is every single one of your career paths that you choose is going to lead you to further success because we learn from our failures. We learn from our, you know, from our success points going forward. But I think a thing that I saw Bill just say, his daughter is following in his footsteps as an entrepreneur. Because that's what business owners are. They are entrepreneurs. And, you know, what you got to do is find a career that makes you happy. Because that's what it's all about. Going to work each and every day where what you do is so enjoyable. It's like having a vacation because you truly enjoy doing it. It's like in our coaching, we advise people to build the business that fits their personality. Often we hear people talk about, you got to scale, you got to scale, you got to scale. And scaling is great if that's what you want to do. But what you got to do is pick that career choice that you're looking for. And so often, Cheryl, do you, do you talk to people that have become burnt out on what they're doing every day? They do. And the thing is, if you're burnt out, look back and find out what the reason is. Is it not where you want to be? Is it a place that you would just need to give up a little bit of something? Yeah. And so we always, people need to look at all the steps in their life as chapters, not as the book. Yeah. But what we got to look at is, see, Donovan is following in my footsteps right now. When you look at this, one of my biggest faults in life is spelling. And when we look, look here, Donovan, <laughs> check out your post, man. This isn't Sherry. This is Cheryl. Okay. You know that brother. So, but you gotta, you know, that's the part of your, you know, but yes, see, that's the whole thing. I often tell people, I often tell people the following, you know, I wish that I had been doing what I do today, 20 years prior to doing that. But the problem was just being honest. I wasn't prepared to do it. 
because I hadn't hit those big failures that enable me to learn from my failures to help other others from living those and repeating those kind of errors. Cheryl, what about you? Do you ever get burnt out? I get tired. I get flustered. I don't know as I've, the only thing I got burnout on was the um, limos. And it didn't take too many teenagers to burn me out on that. But as far as the others, I just, I get tired, but I just look at it and I go on again. I've always been one that would take a path that would close one chapter and move to the next. And that's what I advise people to do. Try to find a job that works for you, that makes the income that you need. And only as Jerry said, scale it to the size that you want to be. You are not the guy next door. You're not the guy in the next state. You need to make it for you. That's why I've enjoyed the jobs I've been in. I've done them for me. Yeah. So let's answer here. Justin, excuse me, Jordan Peters has a really good question. So do you both think that you were successful business owners? So Cheryl, I'm going to go to you first because you own a business, which is IBD Outdoor Rooms. I own the business of CB6 Success Group. You work for me within that group. You do certain things that you're very good at, but that's my company and IBD is your company. So do you feel that you are a successful business person? I think I am. I've, we've been profitable for 25 years. I have two children in the business now that are running it. I can back up and work on the business that you and I, you know, that you have and I can help you with. I can interact with that. So do I think I am? Yeah, I, I would say I will compete with anybody that's out there. Yeah. And myself, and do I consider myself successful? Yes. I'll tell you why. Because number one, I thoroughly enjoy what I do each and every day. I truly enjoy helping people get and reaching their dreams. I'm also feel very happy, very satisfied because I'm able to make a living doing it. I'm able to buy the tools and engage the services. It's like right now we're sitting here and we were able to build a brand new broadcast studio for both teaching and for and broadcasting is we're doing right now. It's the only one like this in the industry. And not only that, we can actually do hybrid teaching. And we're going to be doing that this week when we present our basic chimney technician training, because we're going to be teaching live virtually. And we're also going to have people right here in the classroom that are going to be doing it live face to face. So we're launching what we're going, what's known as a hybrid class this week. And a lot of our classes are going to do that. So when you look at it, I'm happy. I'm able to live. We're not into debt up to our earballs. Our credit cards are, are current. We're making and we're happy at what we do and we feel like we're satisfying people. So what about you? you know, the one thing I want to say here is how do you qualify success? Are you qualifying your success by the company next door? Are you or are you qualifying the success by the way you feel about yourself. I, my company's not huge, but I'm extremely successful in it. I am i don't want to compete. Um, I say it's hard to compete with the big companies. I don't want to compete with the big companies. I want to be the best small company and produce the best product out there. Right. So Jordan, I, I'm seeing your comment here. It's hard to compete with the big companies without having to go in cooperation. And I'm presuming you mean competition with them. COVID hit my business hard and we had no help from the state, but big businesses are always supported. Jordan, I'm going to have to disagree with that. I saw very small companies that were assisted last year for the very first time in history that small companies were assisted with PPP money and they were also assisted with disaster loans. So, you know, what you need to do is, you know, you need to get the right mentorship to be honest with you, to guide you through that. Because for the first time in history, I'm going to tell you what's true, Joe. And I wrote a book called Chaos to Reinvention. And I'm going to strongly suggest that you get that book. 
because that is my story. And what it'll do, it'll take you through what happened to me because I talked about business failures a while ago, because you're looking at a person that the banks called all of my loans. They pulled my funding and I had to go through, and a lot of people know this, if you don't, I had to go through personal bankruptcy in 2010 and had to come back from that. And then what do you do? And like I said earlier, if it hadn't been for a really great friend of mine, and his name is John Meredith. And if Cheryl and myself had not had breakfast with John, I don't know what we would have done because John excited me and what they were done. See, you see right there, Stephen Scaly, we were assisted twice, once last year and again this year with the PPP and last year was completely forgiven. So Jordan, what you got to do here and Jerron, you're dead on the money with what you're saying here. Let me get your comment up. And Don's just put on there, I need to do the disc. And that's exactly right because the disc is what analyzes your personality, your Every. behavior. So I'm going to let Cheryl tell a little bit about how this can help people get to where they're wanting to go and determine their future. Every business person needs to do a disc so they know where they're at with themselves. And also, once you understand yourself, once you understand your behaviors, then you could take it and you can see other people and you know how to communicate with them. You can see them with their disc and it's, you begin to learn, you begin to see people in a whole new light. Your communication skills improve a hundred percent. I, I was an advocate for it before I decided to move into it. Once I moved into it, everyone needs to take it. Right. So if you see here, let's look at what Stephen's comment because Stephen Scalia has said the following. We lost three people just prior to COVID and we had to reinvent ourselves again. And see, that's what goes on here in business and in life. It is a constant period of reinvention because you're going to run up to things and companies that don't reinvent themselves, they're going to become stagnant. Let's give you a great example. I often bring up in seminars and that example is Sears Roebuck. Sears Roebuck had been here for over a hundred years, developing up from a little watch distribution company going through uh, being the largest home builder in America by shipping home kits, out of their Chicago, Illinois factory. And from there, they developed great brands such as Die Hard, Craftsman, and other ones. And at one time, it was everything was Sears. Sears was where, do you remember getting a Sears catalog as a kid? Oh, I remember that was my Christmas thing. That's how we got, that's how we picked out our Christmas every year. We had that, we had Montgomery Wards, and you probably never even heard of Montgomery Wards, possibly. So that's one that went the wayside and different ones in J.C. Penney. But what happened is so many companies did not reinvent themselves. And just like Stephen said a while ago, you're going to go through a constant reinvention of yourself. Most of the people that follow us are in the chimney and bending and hearth industries. And if you want to know an industry that that's had to go through constant reinvention over the past 40 years, it's that industry. When you look at it, it's completely different. You know, Stephen mentioned earlier on here that he came to work for his aunt and uncle, which I remember that's when I first met Stephen was through his aunt Leslie and his uncle Bill Van Dusen. Met them years ago and his aunt became very good friends of ours. We had the same company. They were the chimney doctor in Boston. We were the chimney doctor in Concord, North Carolina. And we both bought from the same suppliers. So it was real common that they got my materials and I got their materials because they actually were in, believe it or not, Concord. They call it Concord up there because they can't pronounce the English language as effectively as we do Southern people. But in, in the South, it's Concord, North Carolina. If you go up Massachusetts, it's Concord. Because, but, that, but we have the true English language coming right here. Okay, see, there's Donovan. You both help me reinvent myself, sometimes daily, sometimes monthly, sometimes as needed. Okay, so Donovan's hitting you right there. What Donovan relies on is mentors in life.
And, you know, that really makes us happy because Donovan works with us. We're able to work with him and mentor him. But he goes beyond that because he goes for outside coaching. He listens to other people that can influence him in this world and giving better ideas. I mean, just in this week, he talked about Joe Ingram who is a sales coach in the automotive industry, okay? But he also subscribes, you know, commonly you're going to see Donovan is going to be listened to Ken Walls. He's going to be listened to Glenn Morshower. He's going to be listened to Scott McCain and others. And again, it's just like what Donovan's saying, all in an effort to help others. That's what's key in this world to get there. So, Jordan, thank you both for your advice and guidance. Sometimes it's hard, but I guess we have to keep trying our best. Jordan, that is the secret to life. That is the elixir. I want you to know something. Winners will lose more than they will ever succeed. But what you have to do is follow the teachings of Dr. John Maxwell, because Dr. Maxwell said the following. When you fail, you've got to fail forward. There's another great person name is Zig Ziglar, who you've trained under their philosophy. And Zig Ziglar said the following, and Zig is so full of quotes. He's probably one of the most quoted human beings that's ever lived. He's influenced over 250 million people, they said. But here's what Donovan said. Jordan, please take this to heart. He said, you don't have to be great to start, but if you're going to be great, you've got to start. And those are some of the wisest words. If you can remember that and put it to work for you, hey, it's going to be a great, great thing for you to do because you got to remember those things. You got to read books. You got to build this knowledge. You know, hopefully, spending this time with us today, maybe we hope that's helped you because that's why we do this podcast that we do and why we started coming and doing our podcast now live. Because we're able to interact with great people on there, just like you're seeing us do today. And people can add their comments in. So, Cheryl, anything else you want to add about? Because we have gotten a little off track today about what you want to be when you grow up. But I think we're helping people get to where they want to be as they have to reinvent themselves. And reinvention is a part of life. It involves change. And before she says anything else, I want to add this. Change can be painful. I want you to know that. Change can take you to your knees. Change can emotionally, it can debilitate you emotionally. But you've got to decide in this world, are you going to go through, continue in the pain that you're in? Or are you willing to undergo the pain of change? Because either one's going to be painful. But you got to remember, you go through that dream. So Cheryl, what would you add into that? My thing is don't give up. Never give up. If you hit an obstacle, move over. Take another path. Open another door. Never miss a good door to opportunity. We're not all going to be successes in the idiosyncrasies of our life. But as long as you've got, you think you're a success in your own heart and you are where you want to be, enjoy it there because life's too short not to. That's it. Life is too short. You're only allowed so many days on God's green earth. That's the way it is. And there's going to be times in your life you may go through health challenges. I was recently challenged tremendously because of an issue that happened with me. So, but that's what you got to do. And people often ask, are you okay? And I tell them, I'm feeling great. But you just had a heart attack. Yes, I did. And this is the miracle of science and medicine today. That when I came out of that hospital room, I was full bore ready to go ahead. And that's what you've got to do because life is going to cut your legs. Life is painful, folks. It really is. It really and truly is. Stephen has a comment. Let's put it up there. Failure is not an option. There's always a solution to the problem. That's exactly right. And it, beyond, it goes into having the right mentors listening to the right people. But here's what I want to make sure you understand. You set your life and you set your business for what you want. Never, ever set your dreams, your directions, your life, and what other people say you need. It's got to be your decision to go there. 
yeah, it's great to get advice from other people. Getting advice from those who have been through it, it's a great way to get there. But that's what you've got to decide. So, Cheryl, we're getting ready to end this. Anything else? I think I said that a while ago. But... You've always said that. I say get up, get off your butt, and get busy. Go where you want to go. Be what you want to be. You can't be a Captain Kirk like me, but it's not going to deter that I'm going to lead. I'm, I'm going to lead people in the direction they want to go. And maybe one day I can lead somebody to a spaceship. There you go. So here's the thing. If you think what we said today is of value to others, here's the thing you can do for us. Click the share button. Share this with other people. This is why we do what we do is we want to influence and help others to get to their dreams. So always remember that. You know, you want to go there. You want to go there. So if you, you know, consider hitting that share button. That helps us get our words out to other people because we love to help other people. And with that, we're going to end this episode of the Chimney and Fireplace Success Network. We really, truly appreciate you being with us. You have no idea what an honor, what a privilege, and what a pleasure it is for us to share our ideas, our concepts. If we can help you in any way reach your business dreams, your, our, you can reach us through our website, cbcsuccessgroup.com, or you can email us at jerry at cbcsuccessgroup.com. We'd love to have a conversation with you and see if maybe we can provide you a path to go to where you're wanting to go. And with that, Cheryl, we're out of here.